Today we're going to be talking about healing from a breakup and this video is heavily inspired by my own experience that I've had back in my early 20s and I want to share with you some of the things that I experienced, went through, but also some of the things that I've learned throughout the years about breakup, about how I would approach it differently with the mindset that I have right now. I also want to talk a little bit about neuroscience and what is going on in our brain and our bodies and what is happening with us when we go through a breakup. According to studies done by the anthropologist Dr. Helen Fisher, when we are in a relationship, the regions that are responsible for pleasure light up. So we receive a lot of dopamine. I don't mean like physical pleasure. We receive a lot of dopamine um, is being released in our brain when we are in love and we experience that happiness in the relationship. When those rates are lower, we experience more depressive feelings, social judgment, and fear. So the surge, the decline of dopamine that we are so used to can cause similar feelings or similar reaction in our body as if we would be withdrawing from a drug addiction. There were some interesting studies done that discovered that the pain we feel after we go through a breakup is similar to experiencing a severe burn or a broken arm. The deficit in endorphins, which also modulates pain, pathways in the brain also occurs. So we experience more physical pain, tiredness, um, we're achy, we're just kind of sluggish and depressed. So basically from all this sounds like we are kind of a neurochemical mess. Less endorphins, less dopamine makes us feel like our life is falling apart. So it will take a while for our brain to kind of go back to a normal, new normal, and some of it will be changed forever. The anthropologist that I mentioned, Dr. Helen Fishen, also suggests that there are kind of two parts how we behave and how we react to a breakup. Those two basic neurological stages are called protest and resignation. The protest may be caused by the lack of or lower dopamine and norepinephrine in our brain. So that's where we might be able to try to get our love back. So we're kind of searching what we're missing. We're scared. We don't know what we're going to do. We had a plan for our life to be with this person and now it's not working out. We are not receiving the same surge of dopamine we're used to when we were with that person, even if it wasn't perfect, even if it wasn't working out well for us in the long term, we're searching for that and we're scared. There is some sort of a hypervigilance. We're kind of, we're not hungry, we can't eat, we're, we're kind of frightened, we can't sleep well, we can't focus. We experience weight loss and kind of a general agitation. And during the second stage, the resignation, we basically kind of give up. And this is where dopamine and serotonin um, drop off, we feel sad, we cry, we feel depressed. So how do we pick ourselves up from all that mess? First, I would recommend that you definitely let yourself grieve and feel sad and feel heartbroken because that's a very natural, normal feeling. You are sad because something that you were used to, something that was bringing you joy and happiness ended. And even if that is rational and um, realistic and good decision, you will still feel sad and you need to feel sad. It's very important to have closure to explain, even if it's not with the person, to explain to yourself why is it a good idea that we are not together and this is the reason why. So when you start kind of going in your head, we should be together, it's just, we are meant to be together, da da da, you're just kind of like, start going over why this relationship makes sense. You can go back to that and you can explain to yourself why the relationship ended. The relationship ended because I wasn't treated respectfully. I was putting all the value in it and I wasn't getting anything back. Maybe you were cheated or lied or maybe you just wanted different things in life and that is the reason why. And that makes sense like you know you can look at it as something that is realistic and it's also practical for your life. It's very important to remind yourself that there is nothing wrong with you that the other person doesn't want you or that it didn't work out. Maybe it was kind of a, a mutual decision to end the relationship, but still there is nothing wrong with you that the relationship didn't work out. You have a lot to offer, maybe just not for this particular person. Maybe they can't appreciate it. Maybe they can't see it. Maybe that it doesn't even matter to them what you have to offer. Maybe they want something else. You have lots of worth and value to the world and to other people, but you have to understand that there isn't anything wrong with you. And this is also a good time to look at yourself, 
your relationship with self and your patterns, your habits, and see what you could change. So now you can look at being single as a benefit because now you don't have to focus on anybody. You don't have to please anybody. You don't have to chase anybody. You can. You don't have to like make your life work with other people. Plan other people plans. You can just do what you want. You can focus on yourself. You can focus on your relationship with self and your friends, and you can. You're basically. Look, you can look at it as the best time of your life, even though you are heartbroken and it's normal to feel heartbroken, yet you can take that time to work on you. So don't jump into a relationship. We are kind of scared of being alone because we don't know how to be alone. And being alone is an amazing thing for you. You can explore what you like, what you don't like, what your interests are. You can start a lot of new things and you can focus on the things that you want to change and you have a lot of mental space for that because now you don't have to think that, well, I might hurt somebody and maybe my boyfriend or girlfriend will not be happy that I'm going on a week-long retreat and I won't be able to contact them. Now you have all this time and mental space to do that. A very important part of this is to remove the ex, the person you've broken up with, or maybe they broke up with you, remove them from your life completely. Their number, all the things that remind you of them. Don't look them up on social media. Block them if you have to. Just act like they don't exist. Doesn't matter to you what they're doing, who are they with. Because if you do that and you see that they are actually enjoying their life, they're going on trips, they're meeting people, you will feel, you just feel terrible. Like you feel like, oh, okay, so now you're actually having a better time of your life without me. And that is a whole new spiral that's gonna take you down with some depressive anxious thoughts and you don't need that so completely remove them from your life naturally you will search you will you will seek those dopamine boosts and kind of maybe just hoping you'll bump into that person or hoping maybe they'll text you or maybe you'll text them and maybe they'll start a conversation and you will look for that even though there is no point to it there's no future to it you will look for that so try to replace these little dopamine boosts with other things such as exercise, exploring your hobbies, meeting people, hanging out with your friends, going on trips, other things that make you happy and make you forget about the other person. Now after a few years, maybe you can go back to talking to them normally, like they're just a friend, but it might take some time, it might never happen, but maybe. Initially, you need to, you need to focus on you and just don't bother trying to be friends, trying to kind of maybe meet here and there, or go places that you might find this person and just you know see them for a little bit that does not make any sense and it feels good and it sounds like maybe it will be a good idea but it's actually a terrible idea for you at this time most importantly focus on you focus on building self-love self-acceptance focus on the things that you want to do focus on the things that inspire you focus on the things that you want so before you, you go into another relationship you clearly know what your values are why this relationship didn't work out and now what i want and what i i want to get from life and from the relationship this is or very hard it's hard to build self-love and self-acceptance when maybe you are left for somebody else if you completely remove this person from your life and you you're not bothered by what they're doing they are not bothered what you're doing and even though that will feel hard for a while and some self-discipline will come handy here you will realize that you're not doing anything for them anymore you're not building a better life you're not finding a better job you're not getting into the best shape of your life for anybody or not for that person you're just doing it for you so all of this will take a lot of time to accept the new normal to meet new people to try new things that maybe you haven't explored before or maybe you kind of always wanted to do but then you've given it up for the other person now you can do it all i also took a lot of time to kind of think about the relationship and what was my part in it why it didn't work out what was the things that i did that i should absolutely not repeat again with somebody else and to me one of the best healing tools was to travel alone and that is how i ended up in us and that is how i eventually met my husband that i am with now but i decided that well now i'm single I can do whatever I want. I decided that I'm going to travel to US for four months by myself. And I did that and it was like the best adventure of my life that I would never be able to do because I could never leave somebody I was with for four months or I couldn't that person because I know they wouldn't be happy with it. But I just decided to took on this kind of a not very ordinary or kind of like just very adventurous thing that ended up being very inspiring and I can end up being the best thing of my life. 
but that took a lot of courage and self-discipline to actually follow through with the plan and to execute my plan and to not think that oh i need to kind of make sure that this guy sees that i'm doing this so i'm better or whatever i just focused on what i want to do and that was the, the best thing that i could have done at the time I hope you guys found this video helpful and inspiring. If you have any other helpful ideas or maybe things that come to your mind when you think about healing from a breakup, um, please let us know in the comment box down below. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.